ফার্মিংক father is always into drunk uh, drinking or into liquor country liquor into playing gambling and all the mother is all, all uh, her mother meeta's mother is already doing household work in the village itself in different houses so then and then these they have sent these farmed out we say four children to work and then they are sitting and eat, uh, getting the salaries that's all we are trying for uh, this girl to come to our school and study she came for some time then again the employer started stopping her because she was learning up so many things so in this case you see the employer is good you can say the employer is good looking after her not beating her not torturing her but will not send her to school the police are helpless unless the parents bring a case you see and the parents don't want to bring the case but these are minor children like in, in other countries there's a society against cruelty to children society against cruelty to animals and they have they have legal teeth so to speak for in here in india nobody has legal teeth unless the mother one of our schools or the valley road a uh, sister discovered that she had about 175 of these children uh, employed by ch- regular children of the school so she sent a letter to the parents and said if you're not able to send your child your domestic child to my school then it's better that you take out your own child please employ the parents of these children and send these children to school and the result is she got 178 of them into school in domestic child labor had no um, no standing they were not seen uh, they, were, they didn't come in under labor laws or anything and now uh, through not just us but through the whole group of people with whom we work we're part of a huge network working for child labor um they have they've uh, managed to get the government now to say that hidden domestic child labor is hazardous so it's illegal now to employ a child My dream is for future I'll study more and I'll I want to stay here uh, after my studies then I don't know what I'll do after my studies followed our street children out there to see why were they coming in in the first place and then we discovered that they're coming in there's no food there's no work there's no school there's no sanitation there's no water there's nothing And so we decided that we would spread our methodologies where children were not getting this benefit. What we do therefore is we bring teachers in and we call this training barefoot teacher training because you need only your feet to walk. Shoes are a luxury. In most of the training colleges, 90% is theory, which is like the shoe. If you've any common sense, you don't need it and if you've no common sense, you shouldn't be trying to be a teacher. And on the other hand, the practical which is the foot is only about 10% in the training colleges we dispense with the theory because we do it all practically we put these young trainees who would not have passed their final exam and therefore can't go to a college we put them into the classrooms they observe what you can do with a 4 year old what you cannot do what you can do with a 5 year old what you cannot do which prepares them 
to be good practicing primary school teachers, at least up to the level of class three or four, by which time the children are big enough and able to walk out to the local government school. Actually, they have come from the remote villages in uh, many parts of the West Bengal. And uh, our teachers will come and uh, see how they prepare their teaching learning materials over here to teach the children in their village schools. And for this, we have trained uh, 12, uh, 12 to 1400 teachers, and they're spread out over 470 centers, whereby we are reaching out to 26,700 children all over the slums of Calcutta. And what I have found also, and which I keep on telling all the principals, you don't have to have a fear of money. If you go into this work and you really do it properly, money will come. People can see the good that's being done and they will come forward. And that has been my right from the very beginning. It has been my experience. Mm. You everywhere you have the same big schools, big elite schools, everywhere you don't find any place without them. And every one of them, you know, feathering the nests of well-off kids. And then those kids will go on to later on become the leaders of the country and possibly bigger exploiters than those that are there already. I mean, why does all this exploitation continue? Because the, the people who are doing it are coming from that same insensitive class because they've never been sensitized as children. had a big uh, thing with the principals of the schools and they produced the most um, elegant excuses you know oh, these children will never survive and, you know how do you expect this to happen it's very wrong it would be bad or wrong of us to bring those children in into such an atmosphere and my response is yeah, so it would be yeah so change the atmosphere don't refuse the children change your atmosphere simplify your needs bring down your big um, money-based competitive education, simplify it, make it community-based. We can do it. We have enough big schools in India to really change the system if we want. And to keep in mind that all those children who are emerging from our big schools, they are going to be the future IAS officers and leaders. On the other hand, the poor ones we take in are going to be the future politicians. So we need to take them all in and conscientize them. Today is Sister Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Yes. They've decorated my office, come and see it. Cut out a lot of the formalities. Cut out a lot of the things which take up so much of your time. Cut out the rigidity. You know, relax, do things in a freer way. Don't expect everybody to be perfect and don't expect to be perfect yourself. And most of all, open your heart and open your gates. And let all these children in and they will definitely convert you. They will change you totally.